All right, this is Reed Davis here. We're going to go over a quick review of testosterone, that testy hormone, testy testosterone, through the eyes of a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner. And let's get started and go through this as quick as we can here. What is testosterone? Well, it's an anabolic steroid. Anabolic means that it builds things up. It's the putting together and building of tissues and cells and things like that. And it's a, so it's a anabolic steroid hormone made in made from cholesterol in the testes in men, ovaries in women, and adrenals in everybody. A little support from the adrenals there. Now it affects any tissue with testosterone receptors, and as an androgen, it's responsible for male characteristics. Now women have some, and you know they all have some male characteristics to some extent, but androgen means male characteristics so while you're growing up it helps form the testes and the prostate and uh, at all times it's responsible for building up muscle it's responsible for sex drive and sexuality sexual health and these kind of things it's uh, involved in hair and especially in bones really important for that in general health and well-being of course and now low T is really common today um, I think it's not as common as you might see on TV, but apparently it's pretty common. And uh, men are going through early andropause, meaning reduction in testosterone, due to chronic stress-related conditions. Now, some of the major symptoms would be low libido, uh, less sexual performance maybe than you used to have, low semen levels, and these kind of things. Also, fatigue, muscle loss, bone loss, body hair loss, like older guys losing hair off their legs or whatever. Uh, it's involved in increased body fat, mood disorders and fogginess, foggy thinking, you know, lack of clarity, lack of concentration. And it's been linked to obesity, diabetes, atherosclerosis, which is hardening of the arteries, uh, gynecomastia, which is male breasts, and hot flashes in men. Now, let's take a look at how it's produced in the body. We have influences on the hypothalamus and pituitary. So there's big organs in your brain that kind of control the hormones. The hypothalamus, pituitary, they work together. The hypothalamus produces gonadotropin releasing hormone and that tells the pituitary to release luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone which in women produce estrogen and progesterone but in men they produce the uh, sperm and testosterone. So mostly luteinizing hormone produces the testosterone. Now it's per the the testes make testosterone out of cholesterol. Cholesterol gets absorbed into the testes and then through the action of enzymes it's converted into pregnenolone first which is kind of the master hormone and that can go off into one branch the progesterone uh, glucocorticoid branch of cortisol and uh, aldosterone and then into the uh, steroid branch uh, DHEA, androstenedione, which converts into testosterone and then into uh, basically either THT or estradiol. But testosterone should be getting used by the body. Now, normal healthy enzyme function and body chemistry are required for healthy hormone production. That's why we always, why we always say you need to get healthy if you're going to have good hormone levels. Now, once hormones are made, they get bound up. Sex hormone binding globulin prevents the free hormone from being used up in immediate vicinity. Bound hormones are delivered throughout the body to more distant cells and converted appropriately and used by the cells there. So sex hormone binding is very important. We don't want all the hormone getting used up in the immediate vicinity where it's produced. Now, so it goes out to these other areas to get used by cells and the cells can use and get the desired effect of the hormone if proper conversion is taking place in the cell. So conversion involves changing hormones back to a usable form or into other hormones for use by the cells and that requires the correct enzymes and adequate amounts. And you know a couple notes here, aromatase from adipose tissue may convert testosterone into estrogens instead and 5-alpha reductase may convert testosterone into DHA. Both these things are kind of unwanted things there. Now, another thing that has to happen is clearance. 
So excess hormones can and should be cleared by the liver. This is why we assess liver function and restore healthy liver in every client, everybody. We're always working on liver, right? All right, so let's see what can go wrong with that. The um, There's a lot of opportunity for dysfunction in this, uh, these, this chain of metabolic events. So the hypothalamus pituitary release a gonadotropic tropic releasing hormone. But the hypothalamus could be dysfunctional due to inhibition or stimulation from just about any input. You see up at the top, the yellow bar there, neurotransmitters, autonomic nervous system, hormones, immune system. Neurotransmitters can inhibit or overstimulate the GnRH example would be dopamine and serotonin, very influential. Those could be off due to nutritional deficiencies, or you might be eating the right foods but not have good digestion, or you could be taking too many supplements. Uh, now, the hypothalamus uh, can also be suppressed by the immune system or by sympathetic overload from the autonomic nervous system, and you can also get poor feedback from hormones in the bloodstream. So basically, it's kind of a garbage in, garbage out. The hypothalamus has to be getting the right signals, which means you have to be really healthy in order to have good gonadotropin-releasing hormone. Now, let's say that's working perfectly well, though. Then we look at the pituitary. That could also be dysfunctional and not produce the appropriate levels of luteinizing hormone and stimulating hormone for basically the same reasons, garbage in, garbage out, because it gets its own signals from the bloodstream as well as the signals it gets from the hypothalamus. Now like for cortisol for instance that can suppress the pituitary output. So can inflammation, so can immune system upregulation, things like that. So uh, supplements can also stimulate the pituitary but they may be overwhelmed by the suppressive factors in the body. Now, let's just say that the hypothalamus is working good and the pituitary is working good and the testes are actually getting their luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone. You could have problems with cholesterol conversion and what will affect that would be chemicals that get in the testes. They're incredibly sensitive. Endotoxins like lipopolysaccharides, these are toxins that come off of bacteria and that sort of a thing. You could have a deficiency of nutrients and the cofactors needed, you know, the, and the enzymes, things and uh, hormone receptors of course could be dysfunctional it could be getting taken up by uh, you know other things and so there's a lot of opportunity for dysfunction right there in the testes you might actually have low testosterone but the other thing that happens a lot is we get too much sex hormone binding globulin that means too little free hormones and you can get the associated symptoms and dysfunction of the low testosterone now too little sex hormone binding globulin is not good either because then you have too much free hormones. Now that would eventually damage the receptor sites in the cells and creates uh, even more serious hormone issues. Now you can also have poor conversion issues where there are not enough enzymes at work in the conversion process. Now that's going on in the cells. This is very common today with the poor diets, poor digestion, bad body chemistry issues, and serious metabolic inefficiencies. The way the body breaks down through chronic stress is kind of what happens. Now, excess aromatase, for instance, leads to men converting testosterone to estrogen, and that is produced in the um, by uh, adipose tissue. You know, if you're overweight, you're going to have too much aromatase. And that will convert it into estrogen for you now. Testosterone in women with too little aromatase may lead to excess DHT. And last but not least, we have our clearance issues. By clearance, we mean phase one and phase two liver detoxification. And phase two liver problems, very common, it means hormones are building up in the system. It can cause serious hormonal disruption for, for us and our clients. And once, once hormones are converted, they have to be used by the cells to get desired effect of the, of the hormone. Receptorship problems can exist where hormones are not binding to the receptors in the cells. And you can have mitochondrial issues with transcription, translocation, transduction, which have a major impact on how hormones are used in the body. So what we're seeing is that symptoms can be pretty far removed from the underlying cause. 
Our job is really to return the body to health, balance body chemistry, seek the hidden stressors, seek the hidden stressors and restore normal function of the hormone immune digestion detoxification elimination and neurotransmitters. We run the appropriate labs and engage each client in a process of diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, and supplementation to address for health success program. That is the way to really fix your hormone issues. So let's look at a couple of things you could do here. Remember the hypothalamus, the GnRH might be inhibited, so you could use some dopamine. That might stimulate the GnRH, and it also inhibits prolactin, which inhibits testosterone. Now in the pituitary, again, the luteinizing hormone could be inhibited. Well, and, and you would check cortisol and stress and inflammation and you could take some uh, and you could take some pituitary like a glandular product now when it comes to the testes and production of testosterone remember uh, lipopolysaccharides can interfere with the manufacture of testosterone so you'd want to check for dysbiosis and you could have nutrient deficiencies or imbalances so you need obviously to have a good diet and be digesting it really well. You, the, the testes are very sensitive to chemicals and to cortisol and so we need to handle that stuff and then they also could get luteinizing hormone resistance for which there's a product called resveratrol has been helpful. Now, so we can also have binding issues, the binding of free testosterone which could produce symptoms. One of the things that causes that is elevated estrogen that elevates sex hormone binding globulin and ends up with the low T. Uh, and you could have poor binding, which would mean elevated testosterone, which might seem like a good thing, but eventually you're going to get the testosterone resistance in, in the cells, so that's not a good thing. So another issue is conversion. You have issues like testosterone turning into dihydrotestosterone or estrogen that'll give you low T symptoms you could have issues like clearance problems you need to check and maintain liver function at all times uh, another thing we do is we look at estrogen if that's elevated we do liver flushes and recheck and if the elevation hasn't come down which it should then you've got uh, you check the conversion enzymes and things like that this gets really tricky and last but not least you could have uh, testosterone symptoms but normal testosterone so uh, you could have problems in the cells with uh, receptors and mitochondria you have to reduce inflammation check for gut dysfunction and things like that by seeking out metabolic inefficiencies and malfunctions and imbalances and by identifying blocking factors we help achieve proper hormone production and metabolism the hypothalamus pituitary function requires healthy gut, low inflammation, stress reduction, everything we do in FTN. We can use some herbs and glandulars and things. We can flush the liver. We can run some check tests, check for food sensitivities and things. We can check for luteinizing hormone resistance uh, by doing a good uh, panel and possible. And then you only then would we assume you have uh, hyper, true hypogonadism. FDN is known for its lifestyle-based protocols and potent, proven, professional, botanical, and biochemical products that build health. We use drugless protocols and behavior requirements supporting the body's innate healing ability and the proper diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, and supplements to address for health success program. Now, the diet, we recommend an ancestral diet, the closest you can find out, everything you need genetically. And you should probably lose some weight and control your blood sugar. Absolutely eliminate sugar. Absolutely eliminate sugar. Uh, if you don't know how to tell, uh, you should check your blood sugar before breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and before bed. It should be under 90 at those times. Now, after food, you don't check your blood sugar after you've eaten because it's going to go up. But you know, when you're basically um, not necessarily fasting, but you know, before meals, should be about 90. Now, you also want to remove inflammatory reactive foods. Gluten and dairy should probably be taken out of your diet for a while and see how you do. Test for sensitivities and food reactions. Check the environment for metals, chemicals, biotoxins, and these kind of things. It may seem complicated, but it's actually pretty easy to do. If you eat real food and eat the right proportions of macronutrients, including uh, good fats, uh, and do some occasional fasting, you can improve your testosterone levels. 
Now the 67, what I call the Rocky Balboa diet. We all remember the movie. We remember Rocky drinking those eggs before he'd go and work out. He actually, uh, on screen, there you go, he cracked six eggs and uh, drank them down. They contain cholesterol. That's a building block of terrest testosterone. Not a bad thing. Uh, done right. Now, fish contains the B vitamins needed to regulate hormones. It's a great source of good fats. If you're eating the dark fishes, you know, kind of the oily fishes. Oysters are rich in zinc, protein, magnesium, and good things. Lean beef gives you the protein, iron, zinc, magnesium, stuff you need. Vegetar vegetarians actually have lower testosterone or higher inactive testosterone, you know, bound up and stuff like that. Um, nuts are very good. They got the EFAs, essential fatty acids, minerals. And you need that for cofactors. Fruits, especially bananas, avocados, figs, beans have the uh, minerals and the fatty acids and things. Fruits have, especially bananas, avocados, figs, beans, have a lot of minerals and fiber and, uh, you know, essential fatty acids and things like that. Good nutrition. Vegetables, especially broccoli that contains the indole 3 carbonyl, which suppresses estrogen. Uh, so does cabbage. Of course, yogurt, oats, garlic. These things have been uh, known to help improve hormone metabolism and production of testosterone. So that's your sexy seven right there. The rest and recovery is really critical. Sleep cycles should follow a diurnal circadian rhythm for good hormone balance. Staying up late and working split shifts can put undue stress on the adrenal glands and therefore the hormones and blood sugar levels and the hormones and detoxification pathways, things like that, like that liver function, which we need to be really healthy. Proper sleep cycles uh, require, you know, seven... Proper sleep cycle. Okay, okay, we need approximately seven to eight hours required for most people. Uh, nine's better for teenagers. An hour before midnight is worth two hours afterwards, according to some research. You can rebuild and detoxify your body while you sleep and you rest your adrenal glands. Probably you should eat a protein snack with a mineral supplement before bedtime. No sugar or alcohol for 90 days when you start this program. Many people wake up between 2 and 3 a.m. That's often due to low blood sugar, which elevates cortisol and makes you wake up. And cortisol elevated at night can depress melatonin secretion, which delays the sleep and wake cycle. Not a good thing for us. Chinese medicine calls this time of night, 2 to 3 a.m., liver time. The body's doing a lot of detoxification. And, of course, we need to always check for hidden stressors to get a good night's sleep. And exercise is critical. There's two main things you need to do high intensity uh, exercise something like the pace program where you're doing intervals which will increase reserve capacity of the heart build lung power up increase your lean muscle mass which is good for testosterone muscle tone of course um, now when you're doing weight training you want to lift more weight and do slower reps and also you want to work on your flexibility and that equals sex ability also Pilates yoga and sex are great for uh, getting fit. So you basically want to work up a sweat regularly. Not exercising is just as bad for you as smoking. Now stress reduction is critical. This is something we specialize in in FDN. You definitely want to take charge of eliminating and reducing exterior stressors, your general and mental emotional stressors. Uh, stress raises cortisol, which definitely can block the effects of testosterone. And structural problems are really critical. You want to get checked for that. Like all functions, sexuality depends on proper nerve flow. Stress reduction for an FDN means identifying and eliminating the hidden stressors and malfunctions within the hormone, immune, digestion, detoxification, elimination, and neurotransmitter pathways. These hidden stressors and dysfunctions are the most common health complaints, including low testosterone. Now, what we do is we run our labs, the hormone immune system, digestion, detoxification, antigenic, pathogenic, inflammatory metals, things like that. And we want to take our supplements. So we suggest supplements that fill three basic functions. Substitution for missing things out of your diet. Stimulation. Uh, certain times you want to stimulate, like liver function and things like that. Support, like adrenal glandulars and that kind of stuff is really critical what you can do men with low testosterone you can take you need some antioxidants uh, you want to lower your lipid peroxides and oxidative stress you want to get lots of rest and recovery and you want to supplement 
only once other systems are improved. Vitamin D is way up there. Zinc is way up there uh, in terms of just healthy uh, t testicles. And um, you want to, you can actually raise testosterone with Tonget Ali, Tonget Ali and Tribulus. They both actually have been shown to raise testosterone. The maca, the horny goat weed, the foti are more for performance issues, blood flow, and that kind of a thing. Other things, other supplements actually help with the metabolizing of hormones. Uh, the methane, known as DIM, is good to block. Uh, certain um, conversion problems sticking nettle root pygium are actually good for the prostate saw palmetto is good for the prostate venous sativa is actually oats just really good fiber source of fiber uh, which helps and so those are some of the uh, supplements you can take um, what we do is we supplement the whole body based on our lab results. We definitely recommend you support adrenal function, restore steroid hormone balance, support digestion, support antioxidation, support liver detoxification function. And it's perfectly okay to use intelligent allopathy as needed. And so sometimes we'll actually use a little bit of biogenical hormone liquids. And these may help reestablish viability of the hormone pathways. You're kind of resetting the pathways or priming the pathways. Provide some relief. Uh, it's easy to self-titrate these things. You can get them. Uh, pregnenolone, DHA, progesterone, licorice root, and isocort, which is cortisol. You can get these as sublingual liquids, sublingual pellets, sublingual tablets, uh, prolonged release tablets, and also micronized oral caps. Uh, might not be quite as good, but they're, they've been known to be effective. And then, you know, last but not least, if none of that stuff works, you'd want to uh, actually investigate your pituitary dysfunction, uh, get into conversion problems. In order to help people with conversion problems and anything else that we talked about in the pathways section, is going to require a complete terrestrial health success system. You really have to focus on the fact that we don't diagnose or treat anything specifically, including low T. We don't diagnose and treat that. They may come to us with that designation or even diagnosis. What we're going to do is get them healthier. We're going to do our lab work, like the H-I-D-D-E-N. Go back to that slide. We run our labs. We do our intake. We get the history. We do everything we do. And then we give them a customized diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, and supplementation program. And remember, this is a trademarked process. Uh, it's protected. Uh, only certified FDNs can use stress for health success uh, in their literature. And so after we give them their customized dress program, then we're going to have to coach them up. We uh, help clients adopt the self-care model based on behavior change. So FDN health coaches or health, FDN practitioners uh, make and keep appointments. We check progress and conformity. We answer questions. We guide course correction. That's critical because no two people are going to respond exactly the same way to your instructions. So you're going to have to give them course correction depending on how they respond. Uh, that requires honest feedback and accountability, of course, retesting, troubleshooting sometimes and uh, referring out for additional needs you know we fill a lot of needs and we can help people get a lot of things sorted out just remember there's no power boating to health it's all about course correction stay on course stay on course get back on course get back on course and that kind of a thing so it's more like sailing here you see in the ship okay guys that's going to be it for this section on testy testosterone and uh, i'm sure it raised a lot of questions um uh, uh, you submit those on the Friday calls, okay? Friday calls is the place to submit your questions if you're not in direct contact with your mentor at this time. Thank you.